Welcome to today's video lecture. Today, we're going to delve into a fascinating topic, intussusception. Before we start, don't forget to check out our website madeformedical.com for hundreds of more videos like this at the end of this video. The link is in the description. In this session, we will delve into the intricacies of intussusception, including its definition, etiology, pathophysiology, clinical presentation, diagnostic approaches, and management strategies. By the end of this lecture, you will have a comprehensive understanding of intussusception and its impact on patient care. So, let's begin. Let's start with what is intussusception. Intussusception is a serious medical condition that occurs when one segment of the intestine invaginates into another segment, resulting in an obstruction. When intussusception in children is diagnosed early and treated promptly with appropriate fluid resuscitation and therapy, the mortality rate is less than 1%. This emphasizes the importance of timely intervention. On the other hand, if left untreated, intussusception can have severe consequences and lead to death within 2-5 days. Therefore, early detection and management are crucial to improve outcomes and prevent fatal outcomes associated with this condition. Intussusception can occur in both children and adults, but it is more common in infants and young children. In children, it is frequently associated with a viral infection, such as gastroenteritis caused by adenovirus, rotavirus, or enteric bacteria. Other potential causes include structural abnormalities, such as polyps or tumors, or conditions that affect intestinal motility, like Hirschsprung's disease. The patient with intussusception is usually an infant, often with a recent history of an upper respiratory infection, who presents with the symptoms mentioned ahead. The clinical presentation of intussusception can vary depending on the age of the patient. In infants and young children, common signs and symptoms include sudden episodes of severe abdominal pain, drawing the knees to the chest, known as the crying baby posture, vomiting, passage of blood and mucus in stools that looks like currant jelly as shown in the images. And lastly, intussusception can present with a palpable abdominal mass. In older children and adults, the symptoms may be less specific, but they can include abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, bloody stools, and a change in bowel habits. Under normal conditions, a balance between the longitudinal and radial smooth muscle forces maintains the normal structure of intestine. Intussusception occurs if there is an imbalance between these forces. This imbalance leads to a segment of intestine to invaginate into another segment and cause intestinal obstruction. Prompt diagnosis is crucial for the management of intussusception. Diagnostic tests are used to confirm the condition and identify the location of the obstruction. The primary diagnostic tool is imaging, such as an abdominal x ray or an ultrasound. Contrast enema can also be used. On x ray, the characteristic crescent sign, characterized by presence of curvilinear mass, shown with arrow, can be observed within the course of colon in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. The abdominal ultrasound shows the classic donut sign, shown with the arrow. Contrast enema is the conventional and most reliable way to make the diagnosis of intussusception in children, target or bull's eye sign. This is the classic radiographic appearance observed during a contrast enema. It appears as a concentric pattern where the contrast material outlines the intussusceptum, the invaginated portion of the intestine, and the intussuscipients, the receiving segment. The concentric rings resemble a target or bull's eye with alternating layers of contrast and normal bowel. The management of intussusception involves both non-surgical and surgical approaches, depending on the severity of the condition and the patient's stability. Non-surgical reduction techniques, such as air enema or barium enema, can be attempted under fluoroscopy or ultrasound guidance to reduce the telescoping and restore the normal position of the intestines. These procedures aim to push or pull the intussusceptum back into its proper place. However, if non-surgical reduction fails, or if there are signs of intestinal necrosis, perforation, or peritonitis, surgical intervention becomes necessary. During surgery, the intussuscepted segment is manually reduced and any underlying cause, such as a polyp or tumor, is addressed. In severe cases, a segment of the intestine may need to be removed. In conclusion, intussusception is a condition characterized by the folding or telescoping of one segment of the intestine into another, causing an obstruction. Prompt diagnosis and appropriate management are essential to prevent complications and restore normal intestinal function. For more videos like this, 
please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website madeformedical.com. Link is in the description. Thank you.